The Life of Yuji Itadori, Jujutsu Kaisen Yuji Itadori is the main protagonist of Jujutsu Kaisen. He's a first year at Tokyo Prefectural Jujutsu High School. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Yuji Itadori. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Background Yuji was mostly raised by his grandfather, who he thought of as a father. At some point during junior high, Yuji chatted with some classmates about how he was interested in Yuko Ozawa, even though she wasn't tall. His classmates wonder why, which Yuji explains how elegant Yuko is. During graduation, Yuji takes a photo with Yuko. Introduction Arc Yuji is in the occult room with Sasaki and Iguchi when the student council president comes in to complain about the club. The president says that the club room's going to be a different club since the occult club doesn't have three members. As the occult club's confused, Mr. Takagi shows up and reveals that he rewrote Yuji's application so that he would join the track and field team instead of the occult club. As Yuji complains, Mr. Takagi makes a deal that if Yuji can beat him, then Yuji can join the occult club, to which he agrees to the deal and manages to defeat Mr. Takagi. Sasaki tells Yuji that he doesn't need to continue being in the club, which Yuji tells her that the club's grown on him and wishes to stay. Yuji arrives at the hospital that his grandfather is at and meets with him. The two start to talk, which Yuji's grandfather tells him to use his strength to help others and to be surrounded by others when he dies. Yuji tries to reply to his grandfather, but notices that he's died, which he reports to the staff. After Yuji finishes the necessary paperwork, Megami shows up and demands for the cursed object. Yuji says that he'll give it to him, but wants an explanation, which Megami explains what curses are. After finishing the explanation, Yuji hands the box over, but Megami finds out that the box is empty. Megami wants to know where the object is, which Yuji says that his senpai has it and that they plan to unseal it tonight. Yuji and Megami rush over to the school, which Yuji notices a terrible pressure coming from once he gets close. As Megami tells Yuji to stay back, Yuji remembers what his grandfather told him and heads in to help. Yuji manages to rescue his friends from a spirit, which Megami uses this chance to exercise the spirit. Megami asks why Yuji is there, which Yuji explains his reason. Suddenly, Yuji finds the cursed object, which Megami explains that it's one of Sukuna's fingers. Another spirit appears, which Megami pushes Yuji out of the way. As Megami is tossed around by the spirit, Yuji jumps in and rescues him. Yuji takes on the spirit, but the spirit easily overpowers Yuji. Megami explains to Yuji how it takes cursed energy to exercise a spirit, and Yuji wonders why the spirit's after the finger, to which Megami says that the spirit wants to eat it in order to get stronger. Yuji eats the finger, which incarnates Sukuna, who easily exercises the spirit. When Sukuna plans to start a massacre though, Yuji takes back his body. Megami tells Yuji that he'll have to exercise him since he's become a cursed spirit. Suddenly, Satoru Gojo arrives and wonders where the cursed object's at, which Yuji tells him that he ate it. Gojo tells Yuji to switch with Sukuna, but switch back after 10 seconds, which Yuji agrees to after some convincing. Yuji switches with Tsukuna, which after 10 seconds, he switches back. Gojo simply knocks Yuji out. Later, Yuji wakes up and notices that he's tied up in a room. Gojo tells Yuji that he's going to be executed, but they're going to suspend it for a period of time. As Yuji's confused by this, Gojo explains who Tsukuna is and how there are 20 of Tsukuna's fingers that they can't destroy. Gojo also explains how they plan to have Yuji eat the other fingers and then execute him, which he then tells Yuji to choose his death. Afterwards, Yuji is allowed to check up on his friends and see how they're doing. After meeting with his friends, Yuji meets up with Gojo, who asks about his decision. After talking about how this might help people out, Yuji agrees to it and eats another finger. Yuji manages to hold Sukuna, which Gojo figures that Yuji is able to naturally resist Sukuna. Megami suddenly shows up, which Gojo and Megami tell Yuji that he's coming to Tokyo with them to join as the third first year student of the Tokyo Metropolitan Curse Technical High School, also known as, in several translations, the Tokyo Prefectural Jujutsu High School. After they arrive at the college, Gojo escorts Yuji through the college to his interview with the principal. Before they get to the meeting, Gojo tells Yuji that it's possible that Yuji can fail his interview. As they arrive at the place for the interview, Yuji greets the principal of the college, Masamichi. Masamichi asks Yuji why he wants to attend the school, which Yuji gives an answer that Masamichi doesn't like. Masamichi has one of his corpse curse attack Yuji and explains how it won't stop until he gets an answer from Yuji that he likes. After Yuji manages to restrain the corpse curse and explains how he won't regret the way he lives in the end, which Masamichi accepts his answer and allows him to attend the school. Afterwards, Gojo brings Yuji to his dorm and tells him he'll be staying there. While Yuji's decorating his room, Gojo explains to him that Yuji's now able to locate Sukuna's fingers like a radar. When Megami comes out of his room, Gojo tells the two that tomorrow they'll be going to pick up the last of the first year students, Nobara Kugisaki. The next day, Yuji talks to Megami about how there are so few shamans before they head out to get Nobara. When Gojo shows up, all three of them head to Harajuku to pick up Nobara. 
After they pick up Nobara and introduce themselves to each other, Gojo brings them to Roppongi for a mission. Once they arrive at the location, Gojo explains that Yuji and Nobara go exercise the spirits as a way to see their capabilities. Yuji brings up the fact that he can use cursed energy, which Gojo hands him a cursed weapon to use. Gojo also tells Yuji to not let Sukuna out during this mission, which Yuji agrees. As Yuji and Nobara head in, Nobara forces the two to split up to find the curse, which Yuji doesn't agree with. As Yuji explores the lower floors, he comes across a spirit and exercises it. Later, Yuji breaks through a wall in order to rescue a child that spirits taken hostage. As the spirit escapes, Yuji gives Nobara the spirit's arm that he had cut off, which she uses to exercise the spirit. After a brief chat with Nobara, Yuji brings the child out to be taken home. After the mission's complete, Gojo decides to take him out to eat, which Yuji suggests beefsteak. Cursed Boomark a month later, Yuji along with Nobara and Megumi are brought to a detention center for a mission by Kiyotaka. Kiyotaka explains the situation in the detention center and how it's their job to rescue any survivors. When a parent comes to ask if her son's safe, Yuji decides to rescue the guy. As the three head into the center, they notice the area's been expanded. Megumi notices that the exit's gone, which Yuji and Nobara wonder what they're going to do. Megumi tells them that his Shikigami that he summoned is capable of finding the exit, which Yuji and Nobara are glad about. The three then head deeper into the center where they come across some corpses. Yuji examines one of the corpses and finds out that it's that guy that one lady was looking for. Yuji decides to take the corpse back to give it a proper death, which Megumi tells him to leave it. Yuji and Megumi then get into an argument, but stop when Nobara is teleported to another location. Before the two can react to this, a special grade cursed spirit shows up. Yuji quickly reacts and tries to attack it with his cursed weapon, but the spirit easily breaks it and even cuts off Yuji's hand. Yuji tries to get Tsukuna to help them, but Tsukuna refuses and even says that he'll kill Yuji's friends first. Yuji then tells Megumi to go rescue Nobara and to give a signal once they're out, since he'll switch with Tsukuna by then. After Megumi leaves, Yuji takes on the spirit, but the spirit easily overpowers him. Yuji realizes how weak he is, but remembers what Masamichi had told him, and decides to use his negative emotions against that spirit. The spirit easily catches Yuji's punch, but they both suddenly hear a wolf howl. After hearing this, Yuji switches with Tsukuna. After the spirit's taken care of, Yuji fails to take back his body, which causes Tsukuna to go after Megumi. After a while, Yuji manages to take back his body and then has a brief chat with Megumi before dying. Cursed Training Arc Yuji's body is then taken to the school's morgue so that it can be examined. Later, Yuji finds himself inside of Sukuna's territory, where he starts a fight with Sukuna. Sukuna easily overpowers Yuji, and after restraining Yuji, tells him that they're not dead yet. Sukuna proposes to bring Yuji back to life, with some conditions that mostly benefit Yuji, which Yuji rejects, and tells Sukuna to revive him. Sukuna proposes that they fight, and the winner gets their deal, which Yuji accepts, but Sukuna easily defeats Yuji. Before the examination can begin, Yuji is revived and greeted by Gojo. As Yuji gets his change of clothes, Gojo talks with Shoko about leaving Yuji as deceased on the records so that he can train Yuji for the upcoming event. Later, Yuji is brought to a room, and Gojo explains how cursed energy and techniques work. As Yuji gets excited, Gojo reveals that Yuji can't use techniques, which causes Yuji to get depressed. Gojo tells Yuji that they're just going to enhance Yuji's combat abilities with cursed energy and has Yuji punch his hand. As Yuji punches Gojo's hand, Gojo says that there wasn't any cursed energy in it and explains how negative emotions are what fuel cursed energy and explains how he's going to learn his cursed energy flow by watching movies and that the cursed corpse will attack him if he doesn't emit a constant flow of cursed energy. As Yuji starts his training, he has some trouble with it at first. Before Gojo leaves for a meeting with Masamichi, Gojo asks if Yuji met with Tsukuna while he was dead, but Yuji tells him that he doesn't remember. Later, Yuji manages to get a hold of his training when Gojo shows up to teach Yuji about territorial expansion. Gojo brings Yuji to where Jogo is, and after making Jogo angry, tells Yuji not to leave his side. As Jogo uses his territorial expansion, Gojo explains to Yuji what kind of technique it is. Yuji then watches as Gojo easily overpowers Jogo. When Gojo starts to interrogate Jogo, Yuji and Gojo are distracted by Hanami's technique. Yuji and Gojo try to stop them, but Hanami manages to escape with Jogo. Gojo then explains to Yuji how he'll be training until the Kyoto Goodwill event. Yuji asks asks what the Kyoto Goodwill event is, which Gojo is surprised that he didn't tell Yuji about, versus Mahito Arc. A month later, Yuji is introduced to another shaman, Kento Nanami, who will accompany Yuji on a mission. After having a chat, Yuji and Nanami head out to go investigate an incident at a theater. While investigating the theater, Nanami teaches Yuji how to see remnants. The two follow the remnants, which leads them to the roof and encounter two spirits. Nanami has Yuji deal with one while he deals with the other one. As Nanami deals with his spirit, he explains to Yuji how his technique works and why he's revealing it to him. Yuji then takes on his spirit and remembers how Gojo told him how his cursed energy has a habit of lagging. 
Yuji manages to wound his spirit, but Nanami stops him from killing it. The spirits are then examined, which Shoko tells them they were once human. Shoko explains to the two how the spirits had died, and that it's not Yuji's fault. Yuji and Nanami then continue their mission, which Nanami says that they're going to have to go all out against their foe. Nanami and Yuji talk about the investigation, which Nanami has Yuji search for Junpei, while he continues to investigate for the enemy's hideout. Yuji then heads out with Kiyotaka to go look for Junpei. While searching for Junpei, the two discuss how they'll reveal low-level cursed spirits to see what Junpei's reaction will be. Yuji comes across Junpei, who's talking with his teacher Sotomaru, and wishes to talk with him. Sotomaru intervenes, but Yuji depances him and leaves with the pair which forces Sotomaru to follow. Yuji then meets back up with Junpei and the two head to the riverbanks to talk. Yuji asks Junpei if he notices anything at the theater he went to, which Junpei lies and says that he saw nothing. The two then start to talk and find out that they have a lot in common. Suddenly, Junpei's mother shows up and after a brief chat, she invites Yuji over for dinner. Yuji then contacts Kiyotaka and informs him about how he'll be at Junpei's house. Yuji has a good time at Junpei's house, but when Junpei's mom goes to sleep, the two have a serious talk about Yuji being a shaman and what would happen if either of them killed a person. The next day, Yuji meets up with Nanami and the two have a conversation about what happened to Junpei. Afterwards, Nanami has Yuji observe Junpei for a while. Later, Yuji heads over to stop Junpei, much to Nanami's disagreement. Once Yuji reaches Junpei's school, the two get into a fight. Yuji manages to easily overpower Junpei because Junpei's Shikigami's poison has no effect on Yuji. Yuji wonders why Junpei's doing this and takes a hit from Junpei's Shikigami, which the two then start to talk. After listening to Junpei, Yuji tells Junpei to come to his school since they'll find the guy who did that to Junpei's mom. When Mahito shows up, Yuji is restrained and forced to watch as Mahito mutates Junpei. As Junpei attacks Yuji, the latter tries to get Tsukuna to help Junpei, but Tsukuna refuses to help just for his own sadism. As Junpei decays, both Mahito and Tsukuna ridicule Yuji for thinking he could rely on the help of curses like them to help Junpei, loudly laughing at his naivete and making Yuji realize firsthand the extent of malice that curses are capable of. As Junpei dies, Yuji feels so profoundly disgusted at Mahito that he feels a genuine urge to kill him as he suddenly punches Mahito, surprising the curse as Yuji is able to injure his soul. Deducing that Yuji is naturally aware of the contours of the soul due to being the vessel of another soul. As they trade blows, Mahito manages to corner and tries to force Tsukuna to switch with Yuji, but Tsukuna warns him to not do that again. Yuji manages to overwhelm Mahito, delivering a brutal onslaught on Mahito's face. But Mahito manages to get behind Yuji. As Mahito goes to strike Yuji, Nanami shows up and counters the attack. The two then have a brief chat about Yuji's condition and that Yuji's able to harm Mahito. Yuji and Nanami continue to fight Mahito, and Mahito has Yuji fight his mutated humans while he takes on Nanami. As Mahito manages to restrain Nanami, Yuji shows up and frees Nanami. Yuji and Nanami then overwhelm Mahito, which forces Mahito to trap Nanami in his territory expansion. Yuji manages to break in which causes Sukuna to wound Mahito. Yuji sees that Mahito is wounded and goes to finish him off, but Mahito escapes by using a decoy. After Mahito escapes, Yuji falls unconscious while still thinking that they have to get Mahito. Later, Yuji's with the deceased when Nanami meets with him. The two talk about what happened today and what a proper death is. The next day, Yuji meets up with Gojo and Nanami and thinks about how he won't lose again until he kills Mahito. Kyoto Goodwill Event Arc on the day of the Kyoto Goodwill event, Yuji meets up with Gojo and Nanami. As Yuji expresses a desire to meet up with his friends, Gojo convinces him that they have to do it as a surprise, which Yuji agrees with. Later, after the Tokyo and Kyoto students and faculty meet up, Gojo arrives with a large box for everyone. Yuji pops out of the box, much to the shock of most people. Nobara is upset with Yuji, who apologizes for keeping the fact that he was alive a secret. After the faculty explains the rules of the event, Yuji attends a meeting with the other Tokyo students to discuss their plan of action. After the meeting, Megumi checks to see how Yuji's doing after his training, which Yuji says that he's doing fine. When the event begins, Yuji travels with the other Tokyo students until they encounter Aoi. Yuji takes on Aoi, while the other students head off in groups. Yuji gets up and complains about Aoi stomping on his head. Aoi asks Yuji what his type of girl is, which Yuji gives an answer that Aoi likes. As Aoi starts to fantasize about a school life that he and Yuji didn't have, Yuji's attacked by the other Kyoto students. Yuji manages to evade most of their attacks, but suddenly finds himself cornered. Aoi then uses his ability to switch Yuji's location and forces the Kyoto students to retreat. Yuji and Aoi continue their fight, which Aoi thinks about how strong Yuji is, but says that Yuji's lagging cursed energy is wrong. Yuji then listens as Aoi says that Yuji lagging cursed energy is making his weak, which Yuji agrees with Aoi that he can get stronger. Yuji continues to fight Aoi, which Aoi manages to take all of Yuji's blows. Yuji also listens as Aoi explains how cursed energy flows through a shaman body. Yuji thanks Aoi and both agree to fight each other with all their strength. When intruders invade the site, Yuji notices that 
that a screen is being placed over the site of the event. Later, Yuji and Aoi come to Megumi and Maki's rescue. After handing Megumi and Maki over to Panda to get them out the screen, Yuji takes on Hanami alone. As Yuji takes on Hanami, he gets his chance to land a Kokusen, but messes up. Aoi slaps Yuji and explains how anger can both help and interfere with his fight. Yuji then continues to fight against Hanami and manages to land a Kokusen on Hanami. After this, Yuji listens to Aoi as he explains how Yuji now understands what using cursed energy is like. Yuji and Aoi then start to fight Hanami together and manage to attack and evade Hanami. After figuring out what Hanami is capable of, Aoi starts to use his technique and the two manage to overwhelm Hanami. Yuji then manages to land four Koksen on Hanami and seriously wounds him. Yuji and Aoi continue to fight Hanami until they reach a point where Aoi uses his technique to switch Yuji with a cursed weapon that's capable of harming Hanami. Yuji makes it back to the fight, but Gojo suddenly breaks through the screen. As Hanami tries to escape, Yuji goes to stop him, but Aoi stops him and explains how strong Gojo's technique is. After the invaders have been dealt with, Yuji meets with Nobara and Megumi and talk about what happened during the invasion, along with how they'll all get stronger. When Aoi suddenly shows up, Yuji runs away from him. Later, Yuji attends a meeting with the other students and faculty, where they all agree to continue the event. When it's decided that they'll play a game of baseball, Yuji plays the catcher. When Noritoshi is up to bat, the two talk about why Yuji became a shaman, which results in Noritoshi getting three strikes. When Aoi gets up to bat, Yuji holds Aoi after Maki hits Aoi with the ball. After the game's finished, the Tokyo team wins. Death Painting Arc Days after the event, Yuji's being driven to a mission by Akari, along with Nobara and Megumi. While being driven to the location, Yuji and the others talk about the details of the mission. Once they arrive at the location, Saitama Urami East Junior High, they look for information. Yuji and Nobara are shocked that Megumi used to attend the school and asks around for any rumors about the victims. They find out about the Yasuhachi Bridge and decide to check it out. After hours of investigating, they head to a convenience store and discuss about how they didn't find any trace of cursed energy. Suddenly, two students of the junior high show up and reveal some more information about the bridge and that Megumi's sister might be involved with the case. Megumi decides to investigate by himself, while Akari brings Yuji and Nobara back to the hotel. Later, Megumi's investigating under the bridge. Yuji and Nobara asks about Megumi's sister, which Megumi says that she may be killed by the curse. Afterwards, the three cross the river under the bridge and end up within the spirit's territory. As the three prepare to face the spirit, Kechizu suddenly enters the territory. Yuji decides to take on Kechizu while Nobara and Megumi try to exercise the spirit. Yuji manages to easily take on Kechizu, but wonders if the blood Kechizu spat at him was poisonous. When Nobara is pulled out of the territory by Esso, Yuji chases after Kechizu, who also leaves the territory. While chasing after Kechizu, the two encounter Esso and see Esso's back. Esso then gets mad after Nobara attacks him and uses a technique against Yuji and Nobara. The two notice that Esso's blood's corrosive and runs away when Esso starts to fire at them. When Nobara is almost hit, Yuji picks her up and starts to run faster. Once they get far enough away, Yuji stops, but Kechizu shows up and hits Yuji with his blood. As Nobara is worried about Yuji, Esso manages to land a hit on her. Esso then uses a technique, and flower patterns appear on the wounds of Nobara and Yuji. Esso then explains to the two how his technique works and how long they have to live. As Nobara uses her technique on herself to stop Esso and Kechizu from moving, Yuji starts to punch Kechizu multiple times. As Esso undoes his technique and charges, Yuji starts to rush at Esso. Esso Esso tries to attack Yuji with his technique, but Yuji uses Koksen to blow Esso's arm off. After Kechizu is killed and Esso starts to cry, Yuji sees this and gets distracted. A car suddenly drives by and Esso gets on it, which Yuji chases after him. Nobara uses her technique to cause Esso to fall from the car, which Yuji takes this chance to kill Esso. After having taken down Esso and Kechizu, Yuji and Nobara talk about their conditions after dealing with both of them. After talking, the two check up on Megumi and find out that he's actually not dead. All three talk about what to do with Tsukuna's finger, which Yuji says that he can just eat it, but Megumi tells him that they don't know how many fingers Yuji can consume. Megumi does decide to have Yuji hang on to the finger since he looks the most fit, which Tsukuna has a mouth appear on Yuji's palm and eats the finger. The three are shocked by what had happened, but Akari suddenly shows up and the three head off. Two days later, Yuji's back at school, and Sukuna mocks Yuji for awakening his finger and resulting in people's deaths. Yuji simply tells Sukuna not to tell Megumi. Later, Aoi nominates Yuji for the promotion to first grade shaman. Days later, the three finish another mission, which Yuji decides to congratulate himself and go watch a movie that he's wanted to see. Later, Nobara texts Yuji to come to a diner, which he arrives faster than she expected. Nobara's worried that Yuji won't recognize Yuko, but Yuji easily recognizes her and greets her. After talking with them for a little bit, Yuji bids Yuko farewell. Shibuya Incident Arc Sometime later, Yuji, along with Megumi and Nobara, meet up with Gojo, who then takes them to meet with Otohime. 
Once they meet up with Otohime, Otohime tells them that they're going to inspect one of the people that they think is a mole. Otohime informs them that they suspect that Kokichi Muta, the real identity of Mechamaru, is the mole, and explains what his ability is. Once they reach the place that Kokichi is supposed to be, they find out that Kokichi is not there when they break in. On October 31st, Yuji is with Mei Mei and Ui Ui at Aoyama Cemetery while Gojo handles the situation in Shibuya. When Mei Mei gets a call about a curtain appearing at Meiji Jingumai Station, the three head out to check on the situation. Once they arrive at Meiji Jingumai Station, they're informed that there's a second curtain with the curtain at the station. When they're informed that there are transfigured humans between the two curtains, Yuji thinks about how that's Mahito's doing. After being informed about the station, Yuji waits with Ui Ui while Mei Mei checks up on the situation on the station. Yuji starts to get impatient, but Ui Ui calms him down. Once Mei Mei's finished investigating, she informs them about the situation that's happening at the station. Yuji asks if Mahito's in the station, and Mei Mei tells him that she didn't see him, but he might be at the station since there are mutated humans there. Mei Mei then tells Yuji that they'll split up. Yuji then heads into the station through a different entrance. Once he gets inside, Yuji comes across the cursed spirit. Yuji then asks the spirit if he's seen Mahito, which the spirit tells Yuji that Mahito is further in the station. After hearing the spirit's words, Yuji remembers what Gojo had told him about curtains and notices a cursed object behind the spirit. Yuji figures that the object is connected to the curtains and decides to break it. When the spirit talks about how the humans taste after Mahito mutates them, Yuji starts to attack the spirit. Yuji tells the spirit to not underestimate humans, which the spirit says that Yuji isn't smart since he can't even guess what kind of curse he is. Yuji says that the spirit's a grasshopper curse, which the spirit quickly thinks about how Yuji's actually smart. As the curse attacks Yuji, Yuji easily manages to dodge the curse's attack. The curse continues its attack, and Yuji analyzes the curse's capabilities and figures what the curse is capable of. Yuji figures that this is a fight of two arms versus four arms, and starts his counterattack on the curse. Yuji starts to pummel the curse, which the curse decides to counter with his hidden trick. As the curse uses his abdomen to attack, Yuji grabs it and breaks it off. Yuji then kills the curse and breaks the object that it was protecting. Yuji then meets up with Mei Mei and Ui Ui, and the three head to where the trapped people are. While on their way, Mei Mei compliments Yuji on his growth without using any techniques. Yuji comments about how his fight with the cursed spirit would have been harder if it was with Mahito, but quickly accepts Mei Mei's compliment when Ui Ui gets angry at him. As they arrive at the station, they notice that all of the people but one have left. Yuji asks the guy what had happened, which the guy says that everyone else was taken on a train, and then the guy suddenly dies when his body deforms. Yuji gets angry that Mahito was here, but suddenly starts to worry about Gojo. Yuji, along with Mei Mei and Ui Ui, then head towards Gojo's location, but stop when Yuji is suddenly contacted by Kokichi. As Yuji is about to destroy the device on his ear, Kokichi says that he's their ally and that Gojo has been sealed. Yuji listens along with Mei Mei and Ui Ui as Kokichi explains how he had already been killed days before and he set up a backup plan just in case something had happened to him. Kokichi also says that he was able to rule out both Mei Mei and Yuji as spies. As Mei Mei says that Kokichi could just be wrong, Kokichi says that they're currently being followed by cursed users. Mei Mei notices that there are two of them and asks Yuji if the users are the curse he had faced, which Yuji replies that these two are stronger. As Mei Mei says that they should continue on, which Kokichi tells them that there's a screen that won't let them through. Kokichi then tells them that Mei Mei should open a path so that Yuji can head back and head to where Gojo is above ground. When the cursed users show up, Yuji prepares to fight along with Mei Mei and Uyui. Yuji manages to get past the two cursed users and makes it to the surface. Yuji starts to head towards Shibuya, but on the way, he's told by Kokichi that the enemy can move Gojo while the prison gate's boundary is processing him. Kokichi then proposes a plan to Yuji. They'll have two groups of shamans surround the Shibuya station and attack all at once when the screen's brought down. Unfortunately, Kokichi tells Yuji that he can't get in contact with Kiyotaka. Once Yuji gets inside of the screen surrounding Shibuya, he notices that the people are being attacked by mutated humans. Yuji easily takes care of them and climbs a building. Once at the top, Yuji shouts for Nanami and announces that Gojo has been sealed. When Nanami and the others get to his location, Yuji listens as Kokichi explains everything to everyone and what they should do next. After Nanami agrees to Kokichi's plan, Nanami assigns Yuji, Megumi, and Takuma to deal with the screens while he heads out to meet with Kiyotaka. After Nanami leaves, Takuma informs the two that there are two problems with Gojo being sealed. Yuji listens as Takuma explains how all of the shamans that were saved by Gojo are going to be a nuisance with the authorities of the school, and that they would lose a war with all those that have hidden themselves in the shadow because of Gojo. After explaining how Gojo's sealing is dangerous for humanity, the three head out to deal with the screens. As Yuji tries to break through the second screen, they realize that the screen is too strong to force their way through. 
They discuss how they can slip through the screen and that the caster of the screen is most likely within the screen itself. Suddenly, Takuma figures that the caster might be outside of the second screen and explains how the screen becomes stronger with the caster being outside of the screen. The three then discuss where the caster might be and that they may be at Shibuya Tower. As the three reach Shibuya Tower, they use Megami Shikigami to reach the top of the tower. As Yuji and Megami distract the enemies, Takuma manages to break one of the cursed tools that has put up a screen. Takuma notices that one of the enemies has the other two cursed tools that are put up the screens, which Yuji and Megami wrap Awasaka with wire and cause him to fall to the ground floor. As Yuji and Megami find where Awasaka is at, Megami notices that the enemy is still alive. As Awasaka gets up, Yuji and Megami prepare to fight him. As they all fight, they notice their attacks have no effect on Awasaka. Yuji and Megami continue to fight Awasaka but notice that the enemy is just too tough. As Megami tells Awasaka that Gojo's in Shibuya, Awasaka reveals that he already knows that Gojo's been sealed, which Yuji tells Megami not to worry about since his plan didn't work. As Awasaka says that it's about time that he killed them, Yuji prepares to fight but escapes when Megami causes a distraction. As they're escaping, Megami tells Yuji that he's figured out Awasaka's technique. After Megami reveals what Awasaka's technique might be and how they can combat him, Yuji attacks Awasaka by throwing a car at him. Yuji and Megami then fight Awasaka in close combat, which they manage to distract him long enough so Megami's toad can harm the enemy. Yuji and Megami manage to continue to harm Awasaka, and Awasaka tells them not to get cocky. Yuji responds by preparing a powerful attack. He delivers the punch but stops just short and adjusts the power of his punch. Yuji then punches Awasaka and manages to defeat him. After tying up Awasaka, the two break the cursed tools but notice that only one of the curtains has come down. As the two discuss what to do, Megami notices that Takuma has been thrown off of the tower, which Megami and Yuji quickly rescue him. After rescuing Takuma, the two talk about what to do next, which Yuji plans to head to the station that Gojo has been sealed at, while Megami takes Takuma to get medical treatment. As Yuji arrives to the entrance of the station, he notices that humans are being attacked by mutated humans. Yuji thinks about how there's no time to save them all, but Toge suddenly shows up. As Toge deals with the mutated humans, Yuji enters the station, but comes across Choso, who attacks him immediately. Yuji manages to defend himself and gets close enough to attack Choso. Suddenly, Yuji notices that he can't move his right arm anymore, since he used it to defend against Choso, and thinks about how he'll just attack with his left arm. Choso then asks if his brothers had left any last word with him, which Yuji remembers and says that they simply cried. As Choso becomes angry, Yuji prepares to fight. Yuji notices the distance between the two and decides to bait Choso by jumping in the air. As Choso attacks, Yuji manages to dodge and close the distance between them. Suddenly, Yuji is wounded by Choso's supernova attack and stabbed in the foot. Yuji ignores the pain and continues to attack. He stops his attack when he thinks that Choso is going to use piercing blood, but Choso starts to attack with his flowing red scale attack. Choso then attacks with piercing blood, but Yuji manages to withstand the attack because Choso messed up. Afterwards, Yuji is suddenly contacted by Kokuchi again. While dodging Choso's attacks, Yuji listens as Kokuchi informs him about the blood manipulation he's capable of. When Kokuji advises Yuji to head into the bathroom, Yuji heads into the bathroom and hides after flooding it. When Choso enters the bathroom, Yuji attacks from behind and manages to send Choso into the water. Once Choso finds out that he can't manipulate his blood with all the water around him, Yuji and Choso fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. As Yuji manages to get the edge, Choso manages to land a blow with some blood that he kept out of the water. Yuji manages to stand his ground even though he was wounded and thinks about how he knows that his duty is to take out Choso so that the others can go save Gojo. Yuji continues his fight with Choso and manages to land a few good hits, but Choso manages to knock Yuji into a wall. As Choso is about to finish Yuji off, he stops for some reason. After Choso leaves, Yuji is found by Mimiko and Nanako. The two start to feed Yuji Sukuna's fingers, but have to retreat when Jogo arrives. Jogo then feeds Yuji 10 of Sukuna's fingers, which Sukuna manages to take control. Later, Yuji manages to get back control and sees what Sukuna has done while he was in control. Yuji breaks down while commenting how he should just die. Suddenly, he remembers how he's supposed to be executed along with how he should die with people around him. Yuji stops crying and thinks about how he has to keep fighting since if he were executed now, he would just be a murderer. Yuji then heads back to the station and encounters Nanami and Mahito. Yuji watches as Nanami is killed by Mahito and then gets angry and prepares to fight Mahito. Yuji charges but Mahito diverts his attention and gets behind Yuji. Mahito attacks which Yuji manages to stop. Suddenly Mahito appears from the attack and lands a blow on Yuji. Yuji asks why Mahito can kill so easily which Mahito gives him an answer along with saying that Yuji won't be able to win until he accepts it. The two then take a stance, which Mahito slowly closes the distance. Mahito tries to pierce Yuji's heart, but Yuji dodges it and lands a blow on Mahito. 
Mahito recollects himself and compliments Yuji while saying how it's now time for round two. As the two continue to fight, Yuji chases after Mahito while Mahito attacks from a distance. While fighting, Yuji thinks about how Mahito has more moves compared to the last time they fought. As Mahito escapes behind a corner, Yuji follows but finds two individuals. As Yuji tells them to get to safety, Mahito suddenly attacks from one of them and uses the other one to create a sword. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Yamagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.